hit record on this bad boy. Hubert, I know it wasn't uh, the most uh, beautiful work of art sometimes, but the way you guys were able to find buckets down the stretch and get the conversions you needed, that would think has to make you happy that you that you were able to get those and get out of here with a uh, win. No, it does. You know, you know, when we needed to get a stop, we got a stop. When we needed to get a rebound, we got a rebound. When we needed to score, uh, we got the ball in, in, to the right hands, and they were able to score. And I just, you know, I, we always talk about how you're going to react and how you're going to respond uh, when good and bad things happen. And that, that's the only thing that you have control over. And I was really proud of how our team re reacted and responded and um, you know, in the second half, we only had two turnovers. We made 17 of the last 18 free throws. Um, it's an eighth straight game that we've out-rebounded an opponent. And um, we just got to do a better job of defending without fouling. But I thought, you know, our initial, uh, you know, getting stops was really good. And just again, just really proud of the guys. Armando. How comforting is it the way you've been shooting free throws to go with the bonus that early? And kind of have an eclipse as well. Well, I mean, it's a huge part of our game. You know, it's you know we always say that we want to dominate points in the paint in three areas. You know, in post penetration, offensive rebounds, and that gives you an opportunity to get fouled and get to the free throw line. You know, we we have bigs that can score down low in the post. We've got guards that can attack the basket, and that's an advantage for us. So we want to use it um, not just to get to the free throw line and be able to score, but Especially when, you know, I don't think we shot the ball particularly well. I mean, 29% from three, it goes back to the same thing again. You know, are you defending? Are you rebounding? Are you taking care of the basketball? And in the second half, we checked all three of those boxes. Armando didn't attempt a shot in the first half, had those two fouls. Picked up an early third foul, but didn't foul again. Had a big block on post late. What did you see from him that he kind of engaged himself in everything without picking up that fourth foul? And, yeah. And I think he sort of looked like he may have kind of taken over the paint late. Yeah, that was just really huge. You know, I was trying to decide what to do to leave him in. We were thinking about, at that point, we had not doubled um, post in the post. And we were thinking about doing that because we just needed Armando in the game. And it just showed, you know, one, he did get frustrated, you know, with the first half that he had. and and. He stayed poised and disciplined on the defensive end and continued throughout the game and not get a fourth foul. And so I was just, uh, that was huge for us um, to have him out there. Uh, but the free throws, I mean, I just, the growth in his free throws, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's just huge. And then that jumper right there at the free throw line, they were, it's, and the finish in the foul, I mean, it's just, Armando was, Really good today. To AJ's point on that, we saw you yeah. tell him you got three, and he gave you this. <laughs> like, was that a was that a convincing thumbs up, or were you were you um, concerned on the thumbs? Was a hoping up? thumbs up. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, but I wanted to let him know that you know because the third foul, he played good defense, but at the last second, he pulled out. Also too. I was like, yeah. You can't do that. I was like, if he makes it, he makes it. But we need you in the game. And. He was really good after that, so I did trust him. <laughs> Cormac Harquo yesterday in the press conference, was that the plan to have him come in and help defend post and help, help in the mix? It's the plan to have everybody ready. I always, in fact, I told him after practice yesterday that I told the team, like, everybody's going to get a chance and opportunity. I can't tell you when, where, how, in the manner in which, but your job and your responsibility is to be ready when your number is called. And so his number was called tonight, and he was ready. Cormac, Harrison, and Armando, I think, combined for six points in the first half. I think they combined for 27 in the second half. You obviously needed them to step up in order to lead this place with a win. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you need you need your dudes to step up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just need your big-time players to make big-time plays. I mean, it's just as simple as that. So for us to win, whomever we play, you know, we need Cormac and Armando and we need RJ, we need Harrison, we need those guys to play well. Cool. And in the second half, they stepped up and made plays on both ends of the floor that uh, helped us win another road game. Going back on James real quickly, yesterday when you were talking about Quentin Post, you mentioned James as the big. you were talking about Armando defending him, and you mentioned James as one of the bigs defending him. Has he been doing more in practice that has helped him get to the point where you got him in the yeah, game? So he was presence of mind? Yeah, he is. Um, I, I told him 
from yesterday after practice. I just love the way that he's improving and uh, working hard in practice. And you guys asked me a question, I think it was yesterday, about Jay Witt and him feeling more comfortable. Yeah. And so, and everybody's feeling more comfortable. I mean, um, we didn't get James until the latter part of the summer. So, like, his progression was later than the other transfers. And so, just, you know, in terms of terminology, new school, new system, his growth, and, you know, he just continued to get better, and it gave me the confidence to be able to call his number tonight. Coach Grant's ready, so two more here, and then Adam. Hi, Coach Rich Johnson, Boston Herald. Just comment on Harrison's kind of quiet but very effective double-double. He's not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I meant statistically wise. Okay. <laughs> and also, was that corner three he hit, was that the, the final surge? Did that begin the final surge down the stretch? Well, it was huge, and I mean, he had 11 points, 13 rebounds. I, I like that quiet stat. He, he, he just does everything for us. He's, he, he can play multiple positions. You saw he could post up, he yeah. can hit threes, he can handle the ball, he's an excellent passer, versatile, big, strong defender, um, just does so many things for us. And I mean, 13 rebounds all the time. I keep saying it's not an Armando Baycott rebounding game, it's a UNC rebounding game. And now it's an Armando Harrison rebounding game. He's just been fantastic on the board. Go ahead. Um, so like yourself, Earl Grant's in year three leading the program. Um, what are your thoughts on the kind of progress BC's made over the last two and a half seasons under Earl? Oh, well, I mean, I mean Coach Grant is he's, he's an unbelievable coach. Um, um, the way that Boston College has continued to build and to grow, it's a testament to himself. Um, not only is he a great basketball coach, he's, he's a great person and his staff. They're, it's a terrific staff that they get it, they understand what they're there for, not just to make them a better basketball player, but better people, better teammates, and better students. And it's not a coincidence that he, he's having such success here at BC. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Coach.